So with the default scene in EV, if we switch over to the rendered view, we will discover that the back face of this cube is very dark or almost black. It can completely ruin your scene, like we can see here the output of EV on the left, compared to the same scene rendered with cycles. We need to solve this lighting issue, there is actually a one-click quick solution for this. In the Render Properties tab, if we enable the option of ray tracing and expand this section, we will get a field called Max Roughness. If we increase this value to say 1, it will completely disable this fast GI approximation. And we will get a better appearance for the backsides, with a slightly better lighting, not just a black face, but it won't work always. If we add a plane into the scene and enlarge it like a floor, we'll discover a nice reflection of the light from this plane, since we have enabled the option of ray tracing. But there is a big problem here, because too much light is being reflected by the plane, which is unrealistic. If we change back the max roughness to 0.5, the light and shadow will look far better and realistic. So you may discover some random solution like this, but it's still not like cycles. For example, if we remove this plane, we'll go back to the same problem of dark face. We can compare this with cycles, there are no such issues in cycles. The back side of our object is not completely dark, it's somewhat gray. We want our EV output to be exactly like this, and we can do much more than this in cycles, by changing this world settings. For the surface illumination, if we increase the strength value, maybe to 3, and in the ray visibility, if we disable camera ray, we'll get a very suitable ambience, and the cube will be properly lighted, while the background still remains dark. We'll learn how to do this in EV, because this is not possible with the default setup. If we switch over to EV, we'll see that the dark face has again come back here, and along with that, we have this annoying background as well. But we can't change it, because there are no such settings to separate out the background in EV. So we'll use a better method to create our environment, let's expand this editor at the bottom. We'll create a world material using shader editor, so let's open the shader editor here, and then switch over to the world option. The use nodes option should be selected here, and by default we'll get a background node and a world output. This background node basically represents the settings that we see in the world tab. Let's first change its strength back to 1, then press Shift D, to create a duplicate or a copy of this node. And to mix these two background nodes, we need to add here another node called Mix Shader. We have to ensure that these two background nodes are connected to its input sockets, and its output should go to the world output. And in order to control its FAC value, we need a Light Path node to determine the ray types. So go to the Add menu, then pick up the Light Path node and place it here. The camera ray output of this node will go to the FAC input. So when Blender determines the background to be shown through the camera, it will fall back to this bottom node for the color and the intensity. If we change this color to something else, the same will be reflected in the background of our scene, and at the same time, all other lighting and shadow in the scene will be influenced by this first background. So let's change this color to a bright color, since this will act as the environment light, and we can also slightly increase its strength to say 3. Now we get a perfect environment, which is also called the global illumination, and the problem of dark face is solved for EV. We can also use some HDRI here, instead of a static color, so from the texture group, let's add an environment texture and add it to our node tree. Then let's select some HDRI file, which you can download from the internet. We have to connect it to the background node, but depending upon the HDRI file that you want to use, you may need to adjust this strength value in order to make it enough bright. So let's make it say 20. Now we'll have a perfect environment lighting as well as the shadow, but we can further improve on this. If we enable the ray tracing option, and then if we change this max roughness to 1, we'll see that everything turns white or very bright. Even if we reduce the strength of our background node to just 1, the back face still does not look realistic, as it is almost missing the shadow. I discovered that a value of 0.85 is the best fit, as it uses the right amount of global illumination and ray tracing. The light and shadow in this case looks as good as cycles, so use an HDRI background node with the strength close to 1, and change this max roughness to 0.85, so far this is the best setup I could create in the new version. We can also connect this environment texture to the second background node, it will give us a real background for the scene which may be required at times, but we don't need to connect this if the global lighting is our only purpose. And if we have a reflective surface for our object, like we can reduce the roughness maybe to zero, and we'll increase the metallic value to get a shiny outlook, we can see a nice reflection of the environment texture. 
In the last step, we'll verify this technique in another project, so here we have already set up the HDRI, now we'll enable the ray tracing option, and under this, we know that the value of max roughness should be 0.85 for the best results. It rectifies the lighting, but it still does not look good because of poor shadows. Even if we enable this option for shadows, we still don't get realistic shadows for the internal parts. So under ray tracing, let's scroll down to the section called screen tracing. Then let's change this thickness to 5 or 10 based on your scene dimensions. Now everything looks good and the output will be quite similar to cycles. So we discussed some important lighting aspects in EV to make it more useful. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.